Welcome back. Today we're going to look at Keep on the Borderlands, the much newer alternate level 1 area. So level 1 that this right here is where you walked out of the tutorial. You could talk to this guy right here and immediately just go to the Keep on the Borderlands. This is a paid expansion, so you'll need to either pay the points, pay, you know, buy the points to buy the pack, or be a VIP. Hopefully, you take my advice and you just subscribe for a month just to run around and see if you like the game, so you won't run into any of those paywalls. Um, but if you want to just play free, this area is a nice to have but not need to have um you're not going to be level one very long so Corthos is fine you can just you can really skip this one most people get this one more because it's another option if they've done six characters right they want to do something different at the beginning so for your convenience all of the quests are just lined up right here. This guy is a plotline giver. So you talk to him and he will just send you to the first person. And if you wanted to, you could walk back and talk to him in between every quest. And he would just tell you to talk to the next one in sequence. We're just going to pick all the quests up and turn them all in all at the same time later. Let's see, we got plenty of inventory space. We have some hireling with us already. We could, looking at the map, run over to the tavern area to bind, so that if we die we end up here instead of back in Corthos. But it's one click to teleport back here, so I'm not worried about it. All of the quests are located outside the keep. This this is literally the keep on the borderlands right here. We're inside the keep. We're going to walk outside the keep into the borderlands. You'll note there was an extra little tab on there. This is available epic as well. So this is a level one quest pack. And included in the, the purchase is the level 21 version of all of these quests. So you really get to run them twice. So, if you look at your map, remember we can see quest entrances on the map. There's a whole lot of nothing, and then a whole lot of something. Literally all the quests are jammed all right next to each other in one spot. Which is really convenient if you just want to run in there and do all the quests without having to run around the wilderness area for, you know, five minutes between quests. So we're just going to head north. At least I assume it's north. It's up. And we all know up is north. There are a lot more explorers, a lot more rare encounters... This is a huge area. It's on, like, it's a huge area to run around in. If you just kind of want a more, like, casual, like, classic MMO feel, you can just run around and beat stuff up out here. And it will be quite a while before you actually have walked over this whole place and got all of the encounters. I'm going to take a peek over here. I don't see the encounter that can spawn there. I usually just look for the ones that are on my path. I don't usually go out of my way to get all of them. There... <sighs> oh, excuse me. There we go. I don't know why this doesn't spawn in from farther away, but this is basically so that you can get up this hill. It gives you something to walk up the hill. I don't know why it doesn't spawn until I get there. There's a little hut right around this corner, which sometimes has another rare. Oh, the Mad Hermit is here. Hello, Mad Hermit. So we go, hey, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. You're not safe here. 
So he calls his pet Panther. And they are perfectly capable of beating off these goblins. But we're going to help. Doop, doop, doop. Couple of them, couple waves of them will spawn, and then oh, already got the raiding party leader. Finish these off. He says, "Thank you. Help yourself to this chest of junk. I will." We're gonna get a lucky example. Yeah. So, money is money. Gems you just sell. We've seen those before. Random great club. We're just going to sell that. Fest the uh, Christmas coins. We've already talked about that. So. The Qual Feather Token. Is unique to keep on the Borderlands. Collect 15 of these fragments. Talk to the guy immediately inside of the keep. You get a horse. And these horses are account unlocks, or server unlocks. So every character on this server, it can just have that same horse. You don't have to go earn it again. So you only collect 15 once, get a horse. You get 15 again, yeah, pick a different color horse. They're not fancy horses, but they are horses. And I believe the epic version is either a faster horse, or you can use a thing to upgrade your beginner horse into a fancier horse. Either way. 15 of those, you get a horse. This little Palomino horse that I have, this is where I got it from. Just on one of my other characters here, they got 15 tokens, and because this is on the same server, add a horse to start with. They only drop, I believe they only drop in the wilderness encounters like this guy, so just wander the wander the borderlands. Every time you open a treasure chest, you might get one. This is a named item. Um, named item is special, and it has a little blue background and everything. Named items have a few extra properties on them that normal items don't. We've already seen in the past, most items are plus a number, bonus, item type of bonus type. Named items just say their name. This is the Traveler's Bracers. And you have to go and actually read what it says it does, because it's not in the name. It has, an, it has a real name of its own. What that means is that the developers handcrafted that item. So it might... So, one, it might have bonuses on it that you can't normally get on that slot. So, as an example, uh, gloves. You could reasonably say, oh, well, gloves, you're going to get strength gloves, right? That's a normal D&D &D thing, gloves of strength. Also, maybe gloves of dexterity, you know, gloves of making your hands move a little faster. But named item could have anything. You, named item could just be gloves of constitution like these gloves just make you hardier like it doesn't have to make sense it's a named item they get to break the rules so they could have not only things you don't normally find they can also have more things in this case there's only two things on it but a named item could have four five six it could have a whole bunch of abilities on it way more than the two that is standard on a normal item you get in a chest. And then the last major thing that named items are used for is an end game thing you can crunch loot down to make your weapons or whatever better. Named items are what you use in that system, not regular items. So even when you get to the end game and you pull a named item you don't want, you can still use it to power up your named item you do want, is the short version of that. Doesn't really matter at level 1. Um, but again, these have epic versions, so those items 
are actually really honestly nice for level 21. The level 1 items are a little weak for level 1. But anyway, we're going on a treasure hunt. So this whole area, the, the overall story is that we are trying to dismantle the Cult of Evil Chaos. That is legitimately what it's called. The Cult of Evil Chaos. So one of those townspeople we talked to said, Ooh, we think there's a treasure in this cave. This cave is said to contain much treasure. But there's a force field and a minotaur. Remember, these are level 1 quests, so they're not going to be super complicated. On the front of that thi thing, on those pillars, there were crest slots. We just go in a circle and we pick up all of the crests. Oh, there's one right there. I'm going to tell the hireling to hold still. I'm going to switch to my shield. And I'm going to time this so that I'm running in between the fire jets. Yoink. I'm just going to go the whole way. Back to my great axe. Tell her to keep following me and we can keep going. I'm using Q to target nearest item. I'm not seeing it light up that there is a crest back there, so I'm not going to walk over there. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, there's a crest. I can't see it because the wall's in the way, but I'm using Q to target items, so I know it's over there now. Bats literally have zero HP. You just have to hit them with something. A former hero. Poor former hero got eaten by bats. Two crests down. The quest even just says we need one more. So we're just going to continue our circle. Oh look, puzzle tiles. We've seen these before. Although I guess if you started and you just went straight here, you would not have seen them before. These could potentially be your first puzzle tiles. Make the light go to the other side. And done. Now that we have all the crests, we just go stick them in by the Minotaur, we punch the Minotaur, we take the stuff. I kind of missed the actual circle path, but that's okay. We'll just go back the way we came a little bit. There it is. So, using Q to target, E to use. You can also just get close and left click. My cursor changes from just regular cursor to the little use icon. And now we beat him up. All right, what did we get this time? Ooh, we actually did get another item. Uh... The silver ingots are also unique to this area. You collect some number of them, ten or so, and you can turn them into a blacksmith in town and he gives you a weapon. It's not an exciting weapon, but it's it's there and you're going to get one of these in like every treasure chest anyway. The high steps. Jump and tumble. It's not as good as my anger step I started with. But it is a it is a named item. Named items have roughly a 10-ish percent chance to spawn on normal mode. I think on elite mode it goes up to 33% chance, so 1 in 3 chance when you're running on elite or higher. I want to say reaper mode buffs it even higher, but if you're playing reaper mode you don't care. Because you probably already have all the items. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of rock climbing. I think I climbed a little too high, even. Yeah, <laughs> I'm higher than I need to be for the next quest. By quite a bit, actually. I'm just kind of going in a circle. 
Just gonna go ding, 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 and we'll be done. The Bugbear Caves. Defeat the Bugbear Chieftain. We're coming up against some bandits that the villagers told us about. Well, that's a door. We're going to go the not doorway. Ooh, bad guy. Bad guy I can handle. Just going to knock these guys down, and they drop a key. Now we can go open the door. There's a door with two little lights on it. That usually means that somewhere in the quest, there's two matching levers you have to push. Or pull. Depending on where you're standing. The game sometimes goes out of its way to explain why a rogue couldn't just pick the lock. Some of these you actually can. Even though it says you can't, sometimes you actually can just pick the lock. Alright, we found their kitchen. We got another key. And there's one of those levers. Now we've got red has been switched. We just need to find blue lever. I'm going to go down here to the silver key embossed door. Remember, these are level one quests. They're trying to tell you what to do. Because this is... This is you skipped the tutorial. I'm going to go this way. So. Spot. Spot is when your character notices a draft or a funny looking rock. And it usually means that there is a secret door nearby. If you have enough search, the little magnifying glass icon I ditched. If you have enough search, find a secret door, get some treasure. We're going to go ahead and just talk to all these slaves to free them. Yes, yes, you can go now. We have freed some slaves. Which is presumably the real reason you were sent here. You're going to wipe out the bugbears and optionally free all the slaves. Here's some more slaves. Boop, 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 boop. We freed all the slaves. And here's our blue switch. I took a little bit of damage, so I'm going to tell the hireling to heal me. And now we run back to the door we saw at the very beginning of the quest. So, up and back around. If you don't know where you're going, look at the map. Look for the way you haven't gone yet, which is this way on my map. say this is where I want to go. Oh look, a boss. Just go ahead and throw my smite in there because I can. Take the gold key. And I think we get a treasure chest and we're done. Looting the treasury completes the quest. If you have a rogue, oh we got yet another named item that's not as good as the thing we got from Corthos. I don't have a rogue, so I can't actually... Can't open that one. The Corthos items are generally better than these items, but... There are way more of these items, and they cover different slots. I've gotten kind of unlucky, and we've hit Bracer over and over again, but a lot of the other stuff I'm wearing is just kind of cruddy anyway. So there is a chance we'll pull something for either uh, maybe a trinket or some gloves. Maybe we'll get a cloak that does something besides the one-time use feather fall. Like, not all of these items are great, we just happen to keep getting the one slot we have. 
Watch your step. Explore the caves. You were told that there were some scaly creatures around here. It's kobolds. Now, by watch your step, they mean literally watch your step. The kobolds have a booby trap right there. If you... I, I don't know why they came from behind me. Uh, I think the lever's down there. Oh, right. Lever. You pull the lever, the garbage chute opens up. You fall down, and you have to fight your way through some... You have to walk through the Star Wars style trash compactor fighting all the trash monsters to work your way back up through a secret door and come back out this way and try not to fall in again. Or you let the hireling or whoever go first and you just kind of jump this corner and we just keep going. Because all we care about is the kobolds. So there's another warning gong. In this quest in particular, if you have a ranged character, somebody who can damage the kobolds at a distance, there's a kobold runner. If you can kill the kobold runner before he runs down and rings this bell, when you walk into this room, these guys will not fight you because they were not warned you were coming. And you can talk to them, and they'll say, "Hey, go kill the chief, and we'll and we'll be good." There's even an extra chest over here that I don't, I don't believe that I have even in a level one quest. I don't believe I have enough search. Nope. Either that, or you're not allowed to get it if you kill these kobolds. The peaceful solution gives you not only the kobolds, um, treasure. You get the kobolds. They will join you in the final quest. You cannot full complete the final quest unless you have all three um, charms, I think, or whatever they are. They're symbols of the cult of evil chaos. And, there, and three of these quests, you can get one. This one, you have to kill the runner so he doesn't warn the guys because you get it from that shaman that we killed. And since I can't kill it from a distance, we're not going to get that one. But it's okay. We miss out on like a chest or two. Interesting, we got some plate. Rough plate might actually be... Let's see. It's plus one. So is ours. Constitution versus fortification. So, we're going to wear this one. Because our constitution was odd. So, that plus one constitution did nothing. Uh, light resistance. Light attacks are too rare to matter. We actually look like we're nice and armored now, too. What is fortification? Fortification is this number right here. What fortification does is it protects you from critical hits and sneak attacks. Outside of extra abilities, if you get 100% fortification, that means you cannot be critical hit. Anytime that the enemy gets a critical hit, they roll a d100 to see if they beat your fortification. If you can get it to 100, you don't take critical hits or sneak attacks from rogues. Now, there are abilities that let you bypass a certain amount of fortification, and a lot of bosses will have, like, 50% bypass, so they ignore 50 of your fortification or something like that. So a lot of endgame builds you'll see on the forum actually do have more than 100 fortification. That's why they're making up for the bosses and the things they're fighting have X amount of penetration. If you know you're fighting a boss that has 25% penetration, well, you get yourself 125% fortification, and you're back to being immune to critical hits. So we killed the Cobalt boss, 
So we have to backtrack to this door because the quest actually doesn't end until we loot their treasure room. You could take these tasty hams. They are actually healing items. Uh, you heal 50 hit points over one minute. So roughly a hit point a second, skipping 10 seconds throughout that minute. Uh, hams are pretty good at the early game. That's damn near a full heal for me. Just by eating some ham and waiting around a minute. It's pretty good. Whew. I usually keep them until I'm like level 5 or so when my HP starts to get to the... I don't know if I want to wait around for only 50 HP. Climbity climb, I should have done this one first. Ugh. Sliding back down. There is an actual path, I just like to take the shortest possible path, which involves me futilely trying to run up this mountain. Does my horse give me an advantage here? Oh, horsey almost almost made that. Fine, we'll actually find the road. I should have gone to this one up here next and then jumped down to do the Cobalt Cave. Wow, they want me to go really freaking far around. I probably missed it this way then. Stupid cliffside. This is just back where I was. Here's the road. Okay, game. I went and walked on the road. Orc caves. Obstructing the orcs. There's a whole bunch of the, like, well, I guess there's only like ten quests, but a decent number of them are because there are monstrous tribes all joining this cult, and you have to disrupt them one at a time so that they don't join the cult. Two orc tribes in this cave. So, one's one way, one's the other way. We're going to go straight first. Basically, fire orcs and ice orcs. And we're going to deal with them joining the cult by just uh, great axing everybody in the face. In standard adventurer fashion. Let's see. Take out some more orcs. This is level one. Remember, this is level one on normal mode. We don't have, like, any good gear. So even if I could go on to harder elite, like, I would just die on elite because I don't have any gear. And hard, like, we kill everything in, like, two hits. It'd be, like... A lot more hits per thing even just on hard mode and it would add up over time it would add probably 20 minutes to this video like and this is just to keep on the borderlands this is one of two slightly longer quests obviously the, the last one is going to be long, but two of these ones are also a little long. This one's not too bad. You just have to go through the fire area and the ice area. And obviously I got turned around there, so I didn't get through here in maximum efficiency. So, there is a neat little level one skill challenge here if you have repair disabled device or haggle you can <sighs> you could screw with their equipment i don't think any of mine is high enough for i our only skill is what in what did i even take oh i took use magic device yeah we only have one skill it was not on the list. We were not going to succeed. But if you happen to have those skills, you get a little bonus XP. 
which is nice. I like that they reward you for having skills other than, like, use magic device and the other super obvious ones. Lever on the back of this guy's chair. There's a chest right there. So, you can take this secret door and it takes you past the end game. The end chest is right there. And we're actually going to walk right into the back side of the Ice Chieftain's boss room. So we skipped straight to the other boss instead of having to walk back to the entrance and work our way all the way through. And there should be a lever. There it is. So we did not have to do all of the ice cave. We just kind of walked in the back door and beat up the ice cave boss. Grab our loot. Uh, still not as good as spear block. Nothing else looks like it's special. I don't have the required search ranks to open this. Sometimes there's just like a lever or something, but I don't see anything. There's one more thing I want to show you in this quest, though. So, just like the Cobalt quest, there's a way to get an evil chaos charm in this quest. And you do that by going in the ice area, way over to the end, and there is an, a non-violent orc sitting here. You talk to her, and then apparently she is the former leader of the Frost Orcs. Foolish daughter replaced her, dedicated herself to the cult. So, we free her. You know, we took her guards out. She's free now. She gives you the Orc Charm of Evil Chaos. Which I'm not going to bother picking up. But I'll point out where you use them. In case you do have them. <sighs> Isn't that the cobalt? Not sure why that's still glowing yellow. I'm reasonably certain I didn't screw up and have to redo that quest. I'm going to click on it just to make sure. Yeah. If it says you're not on the right goal, that means your next goal is turn the quest in back in town, get your reward. The game will not let you just keep going back into the quest. There are ways around that, but it's mostly unnecessary. Hobgoblin Caves. This, if I remember right, is the... L Honestly, the longest quest in this whole area. So we need to slay the Hobgoblin Chieftain. Again, we're thinning out the allies for the Cult of Evil Chaos, so they don't have quite as many random... Uh... Quite as many random armies hanging around. There's a lot of ways to go in this cave, and there's actually a whole bunch of dead ends. Most of the ones you're going to find at the beginning of the quest lead you to a key. Like, I'm pretty sure we kill these guys, and one of them drops a key. There we go. Guard room door key. But especially in the second half of this quest, there's a lot of, like, wrong way. Which, again, when was the last time you had an MMO that actually had, like, extraneous rooms that you did not have to go in? Most, most game companies aren't going to budget making dead ends. They're going to just want corridors. <laughs> I don't sense anything over there. Doop, doop, doop. We just got, we got to get a lever. 
Oh, look. Another key. You can't really go the wrong way much in this quest. You just have to keep finding, like, the next door that opens because there's so many little keys. You really can't get far off track here. Unless you, like, literally get turned around and you're walking back the way you came. But even then, the map will remind you where you haven't been. The lever here is in the rest shrine room. I think we still need to go this way. Mm -hmm. Ah, that rat got a solid hit in. There's a fungus. More fungus. You can pick these mushrooms up. So, like, I got a deadly fever blanch. And over here, I got a sweet white cap. Uh, they are sometimes used in crafting. Sometimes they're just turned into very specific guy for very low level treasure. I usually don't pick them up. There is a low chance of picking up a dragon shard fragment from picking up literally any node like that in the game. Like, this is just a barrel. But any of those mushrooms could have an Eberron dragon shard fragment. And if you trade in five of those, I think, you get a minor experience potion. So you get bonus XP for the next two hours or however long the potion lasts. Um, if you're in a really big hurry, oh, this is not where I thought I was. If you're in a big hurry and you want to get back to the level cap fast, sure, grab the things, throw away the ones you don't want. I'm just going to preemptively throw these away because I don't want to have to carry them. They take up a lot of inventory space and it's going to be a little while before we get the bag that lets us carry them without taking a million inventory spaces. That rubble is another node you can get a random item from. Oh, I over I overshot where I was going. Good old map. We have opened this using the levers. There is a troll. That's not a troll. That's an orc. No. I'm tired. Ogre is what I'm going for. That is an ogre. Ogres are sometimes scary because they have this, like, triple attack that they do. And if you're not prepared for it, it could potentially do a lot more damage than you thought that a guy was going to do with one attack. Because he hits you three times in a row. But it's been a while since I actually got hit by the full three hit combo usually things die before they get to that did we get the key we have this key okay take out another pile of dudes follow in the hallway there is a caster in the back here Always go for the spellcasters first. They're the ones who are going to accidentally cause you to die by making you helpless. This is Simon Says. Light them up in the same order. One progress. Dong, dong. Dong, ding. One more time. There we go. Puzzle complete. I don't mind those little puzzles. They're, to me, they're different. I'm so used to all the old puzzles that when they put in a new puzzle, even if it's simple, I'm just like, oh, thank God, a new puzzle. I don't really like that you have to do it three times in a row. <sighs> Ooh, 
Maybe let me just skip to the last one. A straight, oh, an ember, umber hulk. I must have gone the wrong way and got an extra fight. So this little birdies flying around my head means I was stunned. So that umber hulk, if I didn't have my hireling, I got it down to like one HP and then it stunned me. It could have just punched me repeatedly and I could have died. But the hireling was there to finish him off. I usually play with a lot of hirelings because they have occasionally released and it's usually with it, it comes with a big price tag there are some more interesting hirelings that they have made like a black panther it's basically guinevere you know dritz's pet panther the the figurine he throws and it turns into a cat it's one of those so it's not like I'm hiring a cat for a while. Well, we're going to put our shield on as we continue to run through these traps. There's a rest shrine over there. This will actually turn off the traps so your rogue or monk can just run through the trap, pull the lever, everybody else can come through. And whoop. We're almost at the end of this one. I don't know if I've ever been in this room. That, I think, means that I turned the wrong way. Alright, let's try that again. I think I you don't have to go up through the traps is what it is. I am a little bit tired, and I haven't run these quests as much as Korthos, so they're not as memorized. I'm pretty sure the answer is you were supposed to just keep going and completely ignore the room full of trap. Yeah, you walk through that door, I'm going to attempt to take out- oh! We got uh, a nice crit. And the follow-through cleave because of our strike through. Very nice. One swing, cut two guys in half. That's what we're here to do. Okay, we're going to run straight for the caster, take him out, then mop up the melees. Green lever, finally hit. And we turn, and I don't know why, but the boss is, like, alone in his, like, throne room. Where it's just the room he keeps his throne, which to me reads as, this is the bathroom. Ooh, a spark ring. That is actually pretty good, especially for early on. It gives you more mana. And this one gives you more damage for your electric spells. It's nothing I can use. But it's still nice. <sighs> I don't believe I can go any further, yeah. Alright, we're done with... Done with the long meandering one that I get lost in. Everything else is short and I know the quest way better. I think we've only got a couple left. Three left. I'm gonna use the horse to go ever so slightly faster. You can only use horses in towns and wilderness areas like this. You cannot use them in the actual quests. Knoll Caves. This is where we get the third Charm of Evil Chaos. Violent Delights. So, we need to find a way into this Knoll camp in order to infiltrate and take them out. So that they can't join the cult. Conveniently, 
Eula Bloodgleam has a deal for it, for us. And she just literally drops the charm right on the ground. You can just take it. She doesn't want it. She's like, take it. She wants you to go in and convince the, like, she's from, like, the Fiery Knoll tribe, and there's Wind Knoll tribe members here. She wants you to go convince the Wind tribe not to join the cult. We're going to go ahead and pick the pick that up this time because we can talk to him and say hey hey guess what I have the charm of evil chaos scram let the cultist through I am a cultist so if you're going to do this quest the fastest way there's actually a couple of little like journals you can read as you run by you will minimize your backtracking if you read them as you walk by because there's one or two of them you have to look at to convince one of the guys to leave. Nothing fights you in this quest. Not at the beginning. So, I'm from the cult and I can prove it. You should not join the cult. The important outlander, the important knoll who can convince the rest of the people, thinks that his tribe is being sacrificed into the cult, but he can't prove it. So we're going to keep going. There we go. Diary of Boomfoot. Boomfoot knows things and not afraid to tell. So we're going to go back and talk to Boomfoot. What does Boomfoot know that might help us? Hi, Boomfoot. What you know about Zark Suit Club, which if we would have walked a little further, we would see that that's the name of one of the guys we need to convince to leave. Zark the Vicious. Ha! Turns out that uh, he's a coward. Not Boomfoot. The other guy's a coward. And now we know. I'm going to walk over here. Talk to the boss. Surprise inspection. I'm going to investigate your shrine of evil chaos. We find a very specific ring. It's the ring that basically proves that the, the one tribe of orcs is being sacrificed on the altar. Here is... Can I not pick it up anymore? This is something that one of the other guys we need to convince wants. It's... Apparently I can't pick it up once I've picked up the ring. Oops. Doesn't matter. That's where that item is. And then there's another diary entry. Oh, overshot. Want to go into the wind knoll area. There's another diary entry in here somewhere. Was it all the way in the back? Oh, this is the one saying, can't find my lucky rat bone. Now let's, now we should be able to pick it up. I just want to see if I screwed it up so I can't get all three of the guys. I don't think so. I think I just had to know I needed to pick it up instead of just, I know I need to pick it up. The character doesn't. Yeah, there we go. Shiny rat bone. Now I can take it back. Because I can prove that the the other guy stole it. Like, like I found it in the fire knoll area. Just saying. Here's your thing back. Oh, 
I want to say there's one more thing I was supposed to look at. You know, Colva told me she wanted to leave the Borderlands. I think that was the very first one that somebody wrote like they wanted to leave and he respects that person. So he's like, yeah, if they want to leave, I'll leave. Here you go. Uh, here's your rat bone. Cultist snatched it. There you go. Now he's now he'll vote with you. Uh, Boomfoot says that you're a coward. Not so vicious after all. So we've convinced all three. This screen's going to go dark. It doesn't teleport us back into that room. No. I thought I maybe had to come back and talk to the other important guy, but I guess not. So, they blacked out the screen so that you wouldn't notice that they just spawned these guys in here. Good enough. It works. And now they're going to argue. And, of course... Oh, we should we show the ring, and that super convinces these guys. The wind knolls that the fire knolls have been playing mean, and then we're going to uh, beat the crap out of the knolls because violence is how this was always going to end. Wow, I didn't realize they had that creepy little laugh thing. Because they are based on hyenas. That's still... That's still a little weird. Hey, hireling. You want to heal me? Thank you. Get over here, out of... Firing range. They really will help fight in this quest. No cultists left. The orcs are happily going to leave. Eula will now assist us in the final quest. Turns out, this was all a big Romeo and Juliet type thing. She wants to be with well, this wind gnome, but she had to she had to take out the chief. Her father wouldn't allow it, so now the chief's dead. That is, that is all she cared about. Was you took out her father so that she can leave with the other guy. That was it. Dodge plus one percent. I'll use that. We have no glove equipped right now. Now we have dodge one percent. That means literally one percent of the time we are not hit by an attack that would otherwise have hit us. There's all... Oh, the wind just picked up quite a bit outside. Um, secret door. Locked treasure chest. I can't open it, but it's there. Free treasure chest if you have a rogue. Or a wizard that has the knock spell, so you can just unlock things magically. Temple of Evil Chaos is the last quest. I want... To save that one for last, so we're gonna go do Shunned Cavern first. Which means I'm gonna have to climb back up afterwards. The Caged Beast. There are rumors of a powerful beast in this cave that's being corralled by the cult. Uh, I don't think I have to go that way. Door open. Cut down the big goblins and the little goblins. Take out even more goblins. This is a very short quest. We need to push a lever in order to light that up to open the door. So we're going to go the only way we haven't gone. Open, hit this lever, open this door. Knock out a couple more guys. I like being a two-handed K 
character because when you have just like five guys nearby, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna get so many, so many bonus hits. These are all gonna go down really fast, especially because we're on normal mode. There we go. There's the lever. So now we can go and face the creature. See? Green light, so we can go through. There's our shrines. There's legitimately just a bear trap sitting here. If I step on it... it well, I made... Oh, I rolled the die and I was enough to get out, but... It's, it's a real bear trap. You step on it, it'll hold you there and do some damage if you fail your save. There's some rats and an owl bear. That would be a very scary thing for the cult to just have an owl bear if they could tame it. They can't tame it, but they're going to try. Stone ring. That's not supposed to do that. Hmm. So, what we have here is just like that other ring we found. It gives some mana boost, and this time instead of a sonic boost, damage boost, we get an acid damage boost, if we had any acid spells, which we don't. Mythic ring boost plus one. Usually if you're doing the quest on a higher difficulty, like elite or reaper, you can get a mythic boost on your named items. It stacks infinitely. So if you have a mythic boost plus two or three on every single item you have, it'll all stack. Usually only the best of something stacks. Like if I had corrosion 38 and corrosion 50, only the 50 counts. Only the highest one counts. If things are going to stack, they kind of went out of their way to label things as stacking and... There's, like, normal, stacking, but not with this. So it has to be this a different name than that. And then there's a different level over there. So items technically stack, but they also don't stack. They should probably just streamline that, honestly. It's needlessly complicated. But that stacks. Mythic boost? We're on normal mode. Like, I don't think we should have actually found a mythic boost, but maybe there's just a low chance on normal. Like a 1% chance. I don't know. I thought it was impossible, but apparently it's not. Alright, I'm going to fire that horse up again. Just to reduce the amount of time it takes me to get back up to the last quest. I do like Keep on the Borderlands. I like having the extra level 1 quests. Um, I like that they're also level 21. They're really handy at level 21. Because there's a stark difference between gear that is epic, like actually intended for after level 20, and stuff that is not. It's just really nice to have easy, quick quests you can knock out. Get that early XP so you can get more epic level abilities. I, I like it. It's just definitely not a required thing. There's a... In a prioritizing which packs to get, I wouldn't put Keep on the Borderlands very high on, like, need to have. But it's nice. I like it. I'm not... I don't regret having it. I play it on every one of my characters. So... There's a couple of ways you can go in this quest that are not necessarily required. This... So remember, we originally came to this area. Originally, we got teleported here because there's a faction back in Stormreach that has the Codex of the Infinite Planes. That's what the guy, like, in Corthos, we talked to, he's like, hey, we lost a page of this giant book of infinite power. We lost the pages. Somebody got fired, but they lost the pages to the Book of Infinite Power. 
And unsurprisingly, bad guys keep getting a hold of the pages and they keep doing chaosy things. And you are sent. A, there's a, a fair handful of entire quest chains where it's you going after the pages. The page spawns randomly in this quest, but not just like on a random surface. It's going to be in one of the rooms that there's like obviously something there. So the first cave we're going to walk in with very good lighting for there being just zombies hanging out in here. Somebody thinks we're somebody else. We're going to steal all of the keys that are sitting here on this very convenient key ring. Ah, oh, crap. Well, okay. The hireling went and aggroed the guy, so I'm going to go kill these first. We've killed the torturer. Killed his undead minions. My inventory is full. So I need to ditch some of this junk I'm carrying right now. Just don't need, don't need gems. Now we can just put those bolts over there. There we go. Is that enough to carry all the keys? Nice. That should let us open all of the doors. We now have access to that shrine if we need to rest. And the main use for these keys is this right here. There is a prisoner. It's a Medusa. We're going to say, open the lock. Got your key. Shall we go stone some fools? You freed her so she doesn't attack you. She'll actually help you fight enemies for the rest of the time you're in here. She's a little bit special because she will turn on you eventually once she thinks that you've cleared out all of the competition. There is also a gelatinous cube. Oh, you are very much needing to not be in there anymore. Did you successfully? Yeah, the, uh, I didn't know you could petrify a gelatinous cube, but apparently if you're a Medusa, you can. Ta-da! Take the money, I don't, oh, I can take that too. Wait, 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 wait. What'd that say? Damn. Damn, those are some good boots. Okay, so. Anger step. Speed is the most common thing you're ever going to get on a boot. You're going to find speed boots. You're going to put them on. You're never going to take them off. We're not high enough level to get maxed out speed, but level two, 15% bonus to movement speed and 5% bonus to attack speed. So I literally swing faster and sheltering plus four is damage reduction, basically. Sheltering means it's physical and magical, so I take slightly less damage from physical and magical damage. And I run faster without having to click the clicky on my boots. Yes, please. That is good enough. Like, just the run speed. The quality of life of just running a little faster without having to click the thing. Just that by itself is worth dropping the attack and damage bonus from the set bonus. So, yeah, I already regret not taking the mana potion necklace from the Corthos video. There you go. There you go. I've already replaced the item. I should have taken the other one. If I had brought... If I had brought all of the charms... Not only would this room have the orc lady would be in here and we could and she helps you fight that 
undead, and then she follows you. The kobolds would have helped fight the gelatinous cube, and then they would have joined up to run through the rest of this place. Since I don't have those two charms, they did not come. Oh yeah, I also don't need the null charm of evil chaos. I do not need it. So, we've done that whole section of cave. I did not notice the page just lying around on the ground. I've never seen it in there. But we're going to run around and explore anyway. This is where we came in. So we're going to go this way. Because I know that this is the dead end and not the actual end of the quest we have to go towards. It's a zombie with an axe. Watch out. We have explored another passage. We get some... We explore all the nooks and crannies. We get bonus XP. One of them is tricky. One of them is literally you have to jump over here. And if you can get close enough, you can climb your way into... This nice little secret shrine. Nice. In order to get the nooks and crannies optional, you just have to like run yourself up against. Oop. You just have to get like right here. You don't have to actually make it all the way up. Just come in here so it says, oof, dwarves will take forever to get this out. That's good enough for just the nooks and crannies. But if you force your way up there, there's a shrine. Because I brought the Knoll Charm, I forgot to drop it out of my inventory, these guys spawn. Hi. Come with me. Hi. I'll see what I can do. So, she is acting funny. Probably because she's looking at this temptingly large gem. Yoink. Get a little bonus XP and a little extra fight as all of the undead very obviously jump up and attack you. I am not afraid of undead, so we're just going to beat the crap out of them and move on. Uh, da, 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 and that's all there is on the south end of this map. So now we're going to go up here. I think that is one of the places that the codex page can spawn. I'm not 100% sure what the big deal about the codex of the infinite planes is. It just like, it gives random powers to whatever bad guys of the week is holding it. It hasn't really been particularly consistent with what it does. So I kind of don't know what the big deal is. I assume that it's something like, oh, you can cast big scary magic of some kind. Or maybe it'll throw the planes out of alignment and then Hades can free the Titans from Tartarus or something like that. They probably just need to show a bad guy actually getting away with something so we know what the stakes are. Are you still fighting? No, we got everything. Maybe I'm not going the right way. Mentally, he... No, there is another... There's another little bonus room right here. And it is a room that the thing can spawn in, if it's the room I'm thinking of. So, just like the room with the temptingly large gem, shiny, expensive tableware. Yoink! And a bunch of little minor demon spawn.
And we beat them up and we're done. Now, if the page spawns in this room, it usually spawns like back behind. So even just using Q is not always enough to make sure that it's not in here. It's not in here, but I made sure. It's pro I think one of the default locations is just at the end of the quest, because that's where I found it the first like five times I played this quest. It threw me off that it was in that other room. I I didn't realize it was random where it showed up because it showed up in the same place so many times in a row. Bonk, bonkity bonk. Bonk, bonkity bonk. Don't see it in here. And I think we are officially done with side rooms. So the Medusa stays behind in order to get anybody who runs by us. Which is a decent, it's a decent thing if like, haha, we have a, we have a Medusa waiting. I feel like I missed something. This is, I believe they call this lights out, is this type of puzzle. Which is way easier to do. When those guys are not stepping on the puzzle. You. Stay. You. Stay. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. This doesn't seem right at all. Or you can go search right here and there's a secret door. I apparently don't have enough search. Which sucks. I thought that if you killed all of the cultists, which... It looks like I did. I thought it was supposed to open automatically. I'm obviously wrong about that. You are super... Oh, there we go. I, I screwed around with the puzzle enough that the game just opened up the other way to do it. There we go. I'll take it. No, I want you to come with me. And you, come with me. We'll go around the outside. I wanted in here to get the uh, nooks and cranny optional anyway. So this was this was the solution that I wanted was the game giving up and saying, fine, go this way. Kill the enemies quickly. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, 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 pew. So this is the main worship hall for the Cult of Evil Chaos. If you have all three Evil ch chaos, evil ch chaos charms. Go boop, boop, boop. Drop them in there. It will grab all of your allies and trap them in here in hold person, and they will just be like, "How did you? Why did you betray me?" Because there's obviously an evil thing right there. Then you go and you ring the bell a couple times, and you summon the demon, and then you kick the demon's ass. You just go kerplunk, kill the demon, you get an extra chest. Uh I don't have it, but if you have if you're playing cleric or something with a dispel magic, you can actually dispel the hold on your allies 
So you can do this optional and not feel bad that you left them to die, because you can dispel the whole person and they will continue to come with you. Oh, hey, would you look at that? Somebody just left a codex page just sitting here on the ground. Yoink. That's... This is what the gatekeepers sent us here for. We have completed, from our point of view, our entire mission. But, let's still kill the leader of the Cult of Evil Chaos. Because we're an adventurer. We're a paladin. We're a paladin. We're going to go... We're going to go kick his face in. Yeah, I miss. And he's dead. I actually didn't want to kill him. I wanted him to run away because there's a secret door that the, the knoll accidentally opened by getting too close to it. So there's our last nook and cranny. Here's our treasure chest. It was in here. So if you can't search it, uh, don't kill the boss too fast. What do you do? Use magic device. Hey, that's our one skill we have. And a resonating repair amp large shield we already I'm low on inventory space, so I can literally carry two things. Uh, well, we got everything. Okay. So, usually you just wound that boss, and he will run away. He will run away through here, opening this for you, so you don't have to have search. I almost screwed myself out of getting the chest, because I didn't have any search, and I killed him too fast. He will continue to run. He'll go run, run, run through this door that opened by itself. And he will run straight into the Medusa and she will insta-kill him. The Medusa will then fight you. So you can either talk to her and run away. I don't know why these guys turn on you. I have no idea. No idea. But I'm guessing that my hireling lasered the Medusa because she's not here anymore. So you can kill the Medusa. You, you kill your allies, which I don't like. I feel like that's a... I feel like that's like a coding oversight because I don't under I do not understand why they turn and attack you at the last minute there, especially if you went out of your way to make sure you didn't kill them or trap them. I don't know. I don't know. I, if I'm playing pure good guy, I will trap them, kill the Medusa come back and free them because they're out of range so they don't get uh, they're out of range of whatever code thing trips and turns them back into enemies time to collect our loot first I'm gonna I'm gonna go unload the loot we have and we're gonna put that ring on that was actually a ring with plus use magic device is already rare And we, our rings aren't doing anything for us anyway. Sell gems. That's a bunch of our inventory back already. I'm never going to use a club or a small shield. What does my large shield do? Light resistance and some health is better than nothing. Because that doesn't do anything for us. Uh, we don't have tower shield proficiency. So I don't believe that we get the bonus defense when we're running through traps. We're never going to use a dagger. Never going to use a dagger. Great club. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, scepter is usually the weapon type for casters, like wizard and sorcerer, so we're going to ignore those. Uh, scimitar going to ignore. 
spell resistance don't need in such small numbers that's our old armor don't need arrows or bolts or shuriken or throwing axes a lot of our little named items are not as good as the ones we got from Corthos. That's the one we're going to use, though. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sell all the stuff that I'm not going to actively use. I guess I'll keep those. I'll just dump them into the bank. Sell all of that. Unfortunately, we are going to sell anger step already <laughs> didn't take long we are going to equip file of pure water I don't want that we're going to equip that ring here you are water breathing ring or mana ring goodbye well We'll put the water breathing ring in our back pocket just in case we want it one day. Uh, but not only is this ring plus use magic device, we also got the mythic boost again, giving us another plus one to melee ranged and universal spell power, which is a fancy way of saying plus one percent damage is what that means in very general terms. It's effectively plus 1% damage every time we get one of those little mythic boosts. I'm doing like 10 damage right now. 1% is negligible. But eventually we'll be hitting a lot harder and we will care. What do you do with all the items? Well, if you collect these ingots you come to the weaponsmith right here like right next to where all the quests are and the weaponsmith will make you some weapons so the silver ingot which we have one of versus arcane ingot we have three of arcane ingots are for the wizardy sorcery type things that give you you basically pick an elemental type they're all the same just insert your elemental type here six percent chance to critical hit with those spells and 43 percent bonus damage with those spells not bad pretty good actually for low level but you're gonna outgrow it pretty quick similarly you can get silvered weapons silvered weapons have the silver damage type so if you were fighting something like a werewolf you would bypass its damage reduction it's very rare amazingly rare however he does offer basically every single weapon type in the game so even though I don't actually care about I don't really care about anything here except for that I can grab we'll pick the dart the sworn silver dart so all it is is silver but all of the throwing weapons he sells are returning so I will purchase this one dart trading in my ingot and now I have a ranged weapon which I'm never going to use in combat but there will occasionally be a lever or something that I need to hit and I can hit it at a distance boop, throwing the dart at it there's only a couple of those little target levers in the game but it's when you get to them you want to make sure you have a ranged weapon because it really sucks when you don't have one. <laughs> the other type of weapon he sells, if I switch all the way to the end, are ethereal weapons. They are ghost touch. That is legitimately helpful. It is also our first chance to get ourselves a magical 
great sword. So I'm going to go ahead. I mean, I have the ingot. I'm not going to do anything else with it anyway. Yeah. Boom. Great sword. With the upside of it also hits ghosts. So there's my giant shiny sword. It is even bigger than I thought it would be. We're officially on great sword. If I find another cool great axe, we'll use that still. Because this is not that exciting of a sword. But I like that we have great sword finally. And it can hit ghosts. Ghosts have roughly a 50% chance to just not get hit because they're ghosts. A ghost touch weapon ignores that. So when we go start fighting some undead, we'll have an easier time because we have this weapon. Alright, we need to actually collect all of our rewards. Uh, let's see... Nothing off the top of my head. Weapons sell for more money than armor, so in a pinch, grab the weapon. And definitely more than, like, jewelry like necklaces. Uh, at a glance, I don't care about any of this, so I'm just going to take this weapon, because it sells for slightly more. Proof against poison of fortification. If it wasn't competing on the bracer slot, man. Proof against poison gives you full immunity to poison, unless it's a magical poison, and then you still get a bonus to resist. Um, it's actually pretty good, but... Especially because it comes with fortification. Like, this is... This is honestly not bad. Immunity to poison plus some fortification. If I hadn't have already picked up fortification on my armor, I would probably grab this. But as it is, I'm going to grab a weapon because it sells for more. Um, UMD on goggles is nice, but I don't need spot and I'd rather have the attack boost. So, weapon. Dire Radiant means that my light spells will have a higher chance to crit. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, gonna take the armor because I think armor is the next best thing to take money-wise. Again, none of those, none of those look anything like I care about. Armor piercing is not bad, but not, it's a hand axe. Yeah, none of these are looking like things that are super interesting to us. But they are level one quest rewards. Take the weapon because it sells a little more. And then he, because we did all of the quests, also gives us a reward. Oh, that's actually a pretty good that's a pretty freaking good level one quarter staff unfortunately it's level one so you'll use it for 20 minutes and then it'll be time for a level two weapon which is just like literally anything else you find on the ground all right this is the banker so before we get off for the day You have a character bank that is this character only. I have a shared account bank, which is where I can stick random stuff I want to keep, but I don't want it on this character. I can whoop, transfer it to another character. We will not be using it for anything other than putting items in to get them out of my inventory. I'm not going to take any of this old stuff. To make my character a little easier to play. There is a crafting storage here separately. Where you can dump things like those mushrooms I picked up and then threw away. I could throw them in here. I could throw them in here and then just ignore them until I want them. But it's not something I'm going to ever end up using with. You don't actually have to buy this crafting storage bank. You start with a decent number of different items that you're allowed to put in just for free 
Like, I think, like, the first 50 or something, I don't remember the exact number, but it was a decent number. It's like, oh, I can just unload all my random mushrooms. Oh, so, like, I can put the ingots I didn't use. I can throw them in there. I can throw the Christmas coins in there. Gets mad if you do it too fast. I can throw the Christmas coins in there. And I don't have to look at them anymore. In my character bank, I'm going to put my pre-order bonuses. Because I don't want to throw them away. But I want my inventory spaces back. So they're all going to sit. I want that. That's my water breathing ring. And my ranged weapon. And we'll throw our potions in the back. What are you? Chocolate? Uh, that's going to go bad, so I don't want to put it in here. Not bankable. Weird. We're going to... Oh, we can put the feather in there. Okay, so I've gotten rid of everything that this character doesn't want. Back to the innkeeper. Which way is the innkeeper? This way. Sell all that random junk, and then we're done with this area. I'm going to go point out where the horse guy is one more time, just in case. Repair. Nothing to repair. Sell gems. Don't care about any of that, because we paid attention to it as we picked it up. My shield can go in the back. We no longer need the Ember Great Axe, and it's a starter item, so I can't sell it. So, um, right, the horse guy. This is where you spawn in. This is the, this is the gate where you start at. You start right here, and the guy's right here. He has a decent number of just, oh, that's a horseshoe. He has a decent number of different ones. Some of them are faster than others. The low level ones are not as fast as the high level ones. You get the enchanted horseshoe the same way you get all of the feathers. It just randomly drops in the wilderness when you're doing rare encounters. The end. That's where you get the horse. So that's been, you know, a nice little normal mode running through. Keep on the borderlands. We're already level three. Suppose we should go level up. So we're ready for what the next area throws at us. The build is going to be completely in the comments. I haven't decided in exactly what format. But in my in my details, it will be at least a link to where I put the build so you can follow along without having to watch every single video and look for the part where I leveled up. Paladin trainer, there we go. For the time being though, look, we're going to put a point in UMD. A feat. We're going to take a boring feat. We're going to take... That is not the right thing. Am I standing next to a cow? I guess there could be a cow over there. Huh. If you're following this build specifically and we're going to use the fancy tree to be all charisma later you have to take where are you magical training bunch of extra mana uh in spell crit chance increase it's not super exciting but it will, it is a requirement to unlock the thing that we want. So we're gonna take it. 
We got fear immunity, disease immunity, and everybody near us gets a bonus to save against fear. And another religious lore. There we go. We don't super feel more powerful because we used our we used our feet on something kind of boring, but it's how we qualify. So we need to do it. Going to open up our enhancements. We're going to spend four points. Probably just climbing up the Knight of the Trallis tree here so we can get Greatsword as favorite weapon. That's what we want. We're really close to it, too. So... This next tier all needs five points. Uh, which means we need to spend one point down below, which extra smites. We can now take another core. The cores give you bigger bonuses than whatever you're taking up here. So let's see, a whole bunch of saves against fear and enchantments, plus one to hit for all attacks and plus one imbue dice. That's really good. After we get Greatsword as a favored weapon. Divine Might, on the other hand. I think we just... Dump three points into it. We dump three points into it. We have to spend ten points to get up there. I'm going to hold off spending that one point because this is actually one point into this next level because we had extra XP. I'm going to save it till I have all four of the points for the next level. So there we go. The four points from level two, I put them into Divine Might and some Smites. Going to go into the Enhancement tab of the characters. We're going to drag Divine Might down here. I'm going to move my healing up here. Divine Might. What this does, I get a bonus to my attack, damage, and how hard it is to resist things like my trip attack, equal to half of my charisma modifier for 120 seconds. The duration went up as I put three ranks into it. It was 30 seconds, and then it goes a minute, two minutes, I think. Cost me 15 spell points. Good thing I have spell points now. I have 90. Yeah, and so half of my charisma bonus. So here's my charisma. Here's my bonus. Half of that is two. That's not very impressive right now. That num But this is going to be our main number. It's going to go up a lot. And still, that's two minutes of plus two attack and damage. And it costs me nothing. I just click it, and I have enough mana, I can keep it up all quest long. It's actually really, 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 really good, and it's one of our strongest abilities. It doesn't look like a lot now, but it's going to be a ton. A ton later. If you want out of the Keep on the Borderlands... You're going to walk to this shining purple portal that is just up the ledge from where the quest givers are. Here's all the quest givers. So you started over there at the gate. You walked up here to get the quest givers. On your way to the tavern section, you just turn left. Look, there's the portal of return. So we're just going to... Boop. Take me back to Corthos Island, and we are back to where we started. This is the beginning of the game right here. There's the guy who took us. You give him a nice high five, and you're like, hey, I got that page back for you. He doesn't give you a reward. But we did it. So, next time, we're actually going to head to Stormreach, the main city of the game. You talk to the the mate of the ship. Like to go to Stormreach. You start in the harbor. 
This is just the outer edge of the city. We're not even going into the main city yet. This is the outer edge of the city. The harbor. Complete with ships. This is where we're going to call it for today. But now we're getting into... Now we're getting into where you would normally have spent a lot of time in the beginning of this game. Corthos is pretty quick. A lot of these are going to be pretty quick, but there's... We're low-level adventurers. There's going to be a lot of sewers, and there's going to be a lot of kobolds. Uh, sewers and kobolds, that's basically it for the next level. <laughs> but for now, thanks for watching. Hope it was somewhat helpful. Keep on the Borderlands is a fairly straightforward pack. There's not really a lot of... It's not a lot to worry about on that one. Not a whole lot of payoff on the lore either, honestly. The codex of inf on the, the page thing we had to go find was kind of just an excuse for us to go there. It did not affect the story very much. You go there, there's the Cult of Evil Chaos. You slap it around, the people are saved because there's no longer a cult sacrificing people nearby. Standard low-level Dungeons & Dragons fair. It's fine. Easy to understand. Alright, I'm going to call it for tonight. Thanks for watching. You have a good one.